Hi folks, this is Shefik. In this video, we are going to focus on how to use Postgres database as a vector database. And for billion scale vector similarity search with approximate nearest neighbor algorithm with using its PG vector extension. But before we begin, please like the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest videos. Also, your comments are more than welcome. Thank you for your all support in advance. As a prerequisite, you should have your own Postgres. If you haven't, you are able to install it with brev install postgre sql command. Thereafter, you should install this pg vector extension. This can be installed with brev install pg vector command. Thereafter, you should start your Postgres services and access its PowerShell. Now I'm going to access PowerShell of Postgres psql and name of the database which is going to be postgres we need to activate pg vector extension in its first usage you are able to do it create extension if not access vector as you can see this forms me as this extension is already activated it's skipped then i'm going to create required table but before i'm going to drop it if it's available drop table exists name of the table identities now i'm going to create my table create table name of the table is going to be identities and here i'm going to specify its fields first field is going to be id it's going to be integer and it's also going to be my primary key second field is going to be image name image underscore name and let's make it string with maximum 100 characters finally embedding is going to be my field and its type is going to be vector and i'm going to specify its number of dimensions in this experiment i'm going to use facenet facial recognition model that's why i'm going to set its number of dimensions to 128 because facenet model generates vector embeddings with 128 dimensions next i'm going to do everything in the python side firstly i'm going to load my facial data set and as a data set i'm going to use the unit test items of the face library this can be accessed from this url firstly i'm going to import built-in operating system library and secondly use its walk function and as an input argument i'm going to set the unit test items folder which is the face tests and data set and if you check the doc string of the work function this is going to return director pet director names and file names if i build a for loop with the incoming fields i'm going to build another loop in the second level because file names is a list for file name in file names and image path is going to be combination of director path and file name let's print this first all items are listed in this directory most of them are image files but as you can see here some .dstore file or some picket files available i'm going to ignore the non-image files here i'm going to check if .jpeg is not available in the image path then jump to next iteration now i'm listing all image items in the dataset folder as a second task i'm going to represent all these images as vector embeddings and i'm going to use the face library for this task from the face import the face and here i'm going to use the faces represent function it has image path mandatory input argument and i have already it even though it's an optional input argument i'm going to use model name because facenet is generating more robust vector embeddings and we know that this model is generating 128 dimensional vectors and i already allocated a vector column with that number of dimensions now let's check what is going to return this represent function we know that it's returning a list and i'm going to need its embedding okay if this is a list i'm going to build a for loop over it for object and objects i'm going to access embedding k of object this is my vector embedding 
and in this level i have vector embedding and image name let's store them in an instances list here i'm going to append k which is image path and embedding itself this style is performed now i have instances let's check number of instances i have 68 different vector embeddings and let's focus on the first one the first one as image 22.jpg and the second item is its vector embedding this is its vector embedding at its type is list also if i check as number of dimensions i'm going to have 128 dimensional vector so this is matching with the allocated vector column i want to see the limit of pg vector extension and 68 is the small number to see its limits that's why i'm going to create synthetic data and let's say target size as 10k thereafter i'm going to build a for loop for i in range from length of instances to target size here image name is going to be synthetic underscore i dot jpeg and embedding is going to be we are going to generate a random vector embedding that's why i'm going to import numpy dependency first and secondly numpy dot random dot uniform and i'm going to set its limits from minus 5 to plus 5 and let's generate 128 dimensional vector embeddings thereafter i'm going to store them into instances finally this line is going to generate a vector embedding in numpy format but here we have a type in list that's why i'm going to call to list now if i check the number of items in instances variable i'm having 10k i'm going to insert them all into my postgres database now to communicate with postgres database from my python i'm going to use this package as an adapter if you haven't installed it yet you are able to install it with pip install this command and i'm going to import this package import it after i'm going to initialize the connection connection is going to be postgres adapter that connect here i'm going to mention the details of my connection host is going to be localhost port is going to be default port as 5432 database is going to be postgres you may remember i used p sql postgres command to open my PowerShell. this is my database thereafter my user is going to be user and password is going to be password here i'm sending the credentials while i'm logging into my macbook and i store my username password pair into these variables we are not seeing it because of security purposes once connection is created i'm going to initialize a cursor cursor is going to be connections cursor now i'm going to use this cursor to perform statements i'm going to build a for loop over instances and i know that it's returning image path and embedding tuple for image path and embedding in instances and also i'm going to enumerate it because i need its index number and finally i want to use tkdom or tqdm dependency to see the progress tqdm and use tqdm here now i'm going to build i'm going to write my statement statement is going to be i'm going to use f string insert into name of the table is identities now i need the fields of my table i'm going to check it from here my columns are id image name and embedding id image name and finally embedding thereafter i'm going to pass the values id is going to be id x coming from enumerate secondly image name is going to be image path finally embedding is going to be and i should store it as a string here string embedding and i'm going to perform this statement as cursor that execute my statement exception message is clear there is no embeddings field it should be embedding and once all statements are inserted i need to commit from the connection now i should check the number of items from the database side i'm going to use select count set a constant such as one from identities 
I have 10k records in my identities table. Now I'm going to do the most important part. I'm going to create an index on identities with embedding column because if I would not do this exact nearest neighbor algorithm is going to be performed and it's going to be very slow for large scale data sets. I'm going to run cursor.execute and my statement is going to be with index on name of the table is identities then using name of the algorithm hnsw this is the short for hierarchical navigable small world now i'm going to specify the column embedding is the column name and finally i'm going to set vector underscore l2 ops to use euclidean distance this is important i wonder how long will it take that's why i'm going to import time model here and i'm going to set a time dot time before performing this index creation and just after it and let's print how long does it take very fast it takes four seconds 4.4 to create index over my 10k vector embeddings now my next task is going to be searching an image in my database but it's not going to be available in my database i'm going to search at nearest ones firstly let's set my target image i'm going to use target.jpg in my desktop i'm going to import opencv and after matplotlib dependencies matplotlib.pyplot as plt once i import them i'm going to import opencv's embed function to read this image because i want to show what is this thereafter using matplotlib's imshow function and set target image as input this is my target image if i show it with rgb it would be better i'm going to search this identity in my database and please notice that this image is not available in the unit test items of the device how i represent facial images as vector embeddings here i'm going to use the same approach to represent my target image and i know that there is just one face in this image that's why i'm going to access at zero index value and get at embedding k this is going to be my target embedding now let's see what is it i'm going to find the nearest vectors of this given vector now i'm going to perform another statement cursor.execute and here my query is going to be select all columns from identities let's give a alias for identities i here instead of everything get its image name column and i also need its embedding column here instead of getting the vector embedding i'm going to compare this vector embedding with my target embedding that's why i'm going to use this pattern less than dash greater than and here i'm going to pass the target embedding as string this is going to be curly bracket string and target embedding thereafter i'm going to perform this result is equal to cursor dot patch all and print each result as you can see it's printing all facial images at the distances between target embedding and the vector embedding of that image if i give an alias to this as distance i'm going to write another select here move this block inside of it and here i'm going to check the distance is less than the pre-tuned threshold value where distance is less than pre-tuned distance 10 that pre-tuned threshold value 10 is coming from here face nets threshold value for euclidean distance is 10 in the face library so if i perform this i have to give an alias to this inner query i'm just having these items now i'm going to plot them all but before let's order this order by distance not descending in that way i'm going to show the nearest one in the first line here let's plot the image source image is going to be open series inbred function and get here instead of result i'm going to use image pad and distance and print them in the printing line here i'm going to pass image path to imrit function thereafter plot image of source image and convert it to red green blue but here i should also run show function otherwise if i use imshow in a for loop it's going to plot the last one 
This is the most similar one. This is real Angelina Julie. And as you can see from these items, all images are Angelina Julie's images. But my target image was this. This is not available in the font ones. So I also wonder how long does this query taken because I search an identity in 10K, but this can be performed in much bigger data set just before calling this query and just after it. And here I'm going to print, by the way, move this after fetch all. As you can see, this is performed in 0.004 seconds, just in milliseconds. This is very challenging. And all returning items are Angelina Julie's images. This shows our approach as totally working. In this video, we used Postgres database as a vector database with its PG vector extension. And in that way, we are able to search the similar of a given vector even in billions level database just in milliseconds. If you do like this video, please like it and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you make comments to this video, it will help me to reach much more people. I'd be appreciate in that case. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.